G'day guys, Cam Wild Wild Touring. I've got to interrupt regular programming here. If you don't know, we're about halfway through a Shark Bay trip series with the lads, more of a fishing trip. Um, but I've got to interrupt that trip series uh, to have a bit of a chat to you guys about what's going on in the background um, in terms of getting the car and the van ready for our next trip, which we head off on very shortly. This one's a family trip um, in the caravan, a lot of off-road kilometers. We'll be going through the center of Australia. It's gonna be a good one. Now with that, doing like a quite a remote trip, there's a few things I wanted to get done before we go. I've been pretty short on time, so I've been um, bust some ass to try to get it all done. Poor old Percy stuck on the front seat is because the back seats is full of uh, new rims and tires for the caravan. So yesterday I went up to AGD Auto, my mechanic in Wangara, um, Aaron, who's uh, been brilliant, and he's fit some, some new tires to some new rims for me for the caravan. So I'll show you a little bit of, of footage of that. Also, while I was up there with Aaron, he did a bit of a, a quick, um, well, it wasn't that quick, but he did a, a really thorough pre-trip inspection of the car just to make sure everything was tip-top. wasn't due for a service yet, but coming off the back of that Shark Bay trip where I was doing a, a lot of really crappy roads, a lot of corrugations, he just wanted to make sure everything was sweet before the next trip. Um, and I'm really glad he did because uh, he noticed that I ended up having to replace my water pump, viscous hub, some pulleys, uh, and some belts. Um, uh, there was quite a lot of, uh, some of that was preventative maintenance and some of it needed doing immediately. So I'm really glad that he picked that up. That all got done yesterday. So the car's running sweet and um, I'm really confident that we're gonna have no dramas with the car on this trip. Anyway, I've got these tires in the back seat. I'm on my way to uh, the in-laws, Tiff's folks place. That's where we store our caravan. I'm gonna pull it out, get these tires fitted. I've also got a SOG to fit, which if you don't know what that is, I'll tell you about it later. Um, yeah, let's get it done. I want to get Percy out of the car and give him a run. Scratching with a wheel nut. <laughs> oh well. Oh, hates better too. Hey, Rogan. Looks like a proper off road van now. Alrighty, new day, new location, new outfit. It started pouring uh, on the driveway at Tiff's folks' place, so I had to stop. I thought now was a good moment, it's just started raining again. <laughs> but anyway, I got the rims on. Um, so these are Method, the standard in matte black 301 trailer wheels. Uh, we've gone from a 23575R15 to a 24575R16. So it's a bigger rim, wider, taller, and a bigger tire. So all up we've gained uh, 40 mil in height and probably five mil in width. And in the old money, we've basically gone from like a 29 inch wheel to about a 31 inch wheel. I couldn't go too much bigger because the gap between them's fairly small. Mm. Um, uh, the reason that we, we put new rims on it, honestly with you, mainly it's cosmetic. It just looked a little bit funny, this van. It's a big van that was on really small wheels. Kind of looked like the, the big guy at the gym that doesn't do leg days. Not that I've spent too much time in gyms. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so mainly cosmetic, but there's a lot of other good reasons too. We've gone with a better quality tire and definitely a better quality rim. So if you don't know much about Method, they're an American company. So these rims are designed, engineered, tested in the US. And Method, um, they're into off-road racing, like jumping cars off-road and all that sort of good stuff. So they're lighter, 
um, stronger um, and uh, just better quality than a lot of other stuff that's out there on the market. The other thing about Method is that they load test their rims with a 37 inch wheel, whereas a lot of other um, rim companies will load test on 33s or, or 35s to sort of fudge the numbers to get higher load ratings. So yeah, they come up really good. Are you happy with them, Tiff? Yeah, they look good. Yeah. Yeah. It's sort of, un it was kind of unnecessary to be honest with you. Yeah, but. Um, but you really wanted them. I didn't really you? <laughs> wanted them, and I'm absolutely right with them. They look so good. Yeah. Uh, also, while we were there at uh, your folks' place, I also fit the SOG. So I don't have a lot of footage, footage of fitting that because um, I was inside the shed and it was dark and it didn't look too good. But I'll show you basically what it is and how it works. So this has been installed. That's the cover plate. We did originally order a black one just so cosmetically it looked a little bit nicer. Yeah. Um, it was in stock when we ordered it. We ordered them through um, our back equipment. Our back equipment. In it, January. In January. It, honestly, I don't know what happened. It said it was in stock when we ordered it and then suddenly it wasn't and then it was weeks away and weeks away and weeks away. And It was a saga. But it we're was in, an absolute we're, nightmare. We're in June now and it's only really just arrived a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so we only got it just in time for this trip. So... We, did, we actually ordered the, the black filter housing, which never arrived, so we got a refund on that. But at least the SOGs here, we can change this at a later date. Because these go a little bit yellow in the sun. Yes. Anyway, so there's a, a, a carbon filter there, or a charcoal filter, sorry. And there's a fan here that I've installed on the door. This fan sucks air through this ductwork, which is plumbed into the cap of your, um, your toilet cassette. And then there's a trigger switch up here, which activates when you open the hatch on the toilet and starts drawing air from the toilet. So you don't get any smells inside the van. And the smells come through the fan, through that charcoal filter and vent out the bottom there. But the charcoal takes all the smell out of it. So you shouldn't smell anything underneath your awning. I think they even say that people don't run chemicals after using these. Yeah, on the box it says there's no need for chemicals. So I think we still will anyway. It's just yeah. a, oh. it's a habit. <laughs> Yeah, and just because I don't, I don't want the... I still want the poo to break down. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be liquid to be empty. Um, it's funny, my mum and dad have one of these on their van, and mum was saying that uh, when you open the flap to go to the toilet now, you get like a breeze on a your, draft on your, your private parts because there's a fan running. I like the sound of that in summer. <laughs> before I get soaked as well, just quickly, uh, we did, before we go inside the van, we did also get a new hatch installed. Uh, we got the guys at uh, DJM in... Helm Helm Scott school? to fit it for us. You didn't really fancy cutting a hole in the van yourself. Nah, no way. They do a wicked job. It looks like factory. They've used the same latches, the same catch, um, yeah. the same door, everything as the factory ones. But hey, the SOG was a DIY install, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 There we go. Yeah, so that's all storage that was underneath the kids' bunks. There's a massive yeah, space heaps. there. Probably a good spot for camp chairs and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Really, really happy with that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad it looks that. like it was always there. Yeah. Right, let's go inside. It's starting to pour. Okay, so we're inside. We've ordered some new gear. Um, we ordered a spare cassette. Just because when we're off grid, we sort of fill that one after, what, three, three, days? three days if we're yeah. using it heaps. So. That seems to be the thing that limits us off grid. We run out yeah. of toilet space before we run out of drinking water or power or anything else. Yeah, so we've got the spare. When we fill the one, we'll just stick it in the canopy of the car until we're at a dump point and then we'll empty them both. Yeah, these are expensive, Tiff. They are. Uh, where did I get it? I think I got it on eBay or something. It was cheaper to buy... They call it like a freshen up set and it comes with a new toilet seat and the canister. Cheaper than just the, the canister alone. Cassette? Cassette? Yeah, canister, canister cassette, same um, thing. Yeah, it was about $220 or something. Yeah. Oh, if you're wondering as well, Tiff, with the SOG, all I'll do is I'll swap the lids over. So when that canister's full and we pull it out and I put yes. this canister in, we just swap the lids. Yes. Speaking of the SOG, that's quite expensive too. I think it was... 300 Might have been about $300, yeah. Yep. Um, we've ordered a new Sea Gear mat. We didn't technically need another one. The one that we have is still good. It's got a few burn marks from fires, but <laughs> it's, it still does the job. The main reason why I wanted a new one was because our old one is only three meters wide. Um, we bought it to um, suit our last camper trailer and um, hybrid caravan. So yeah. it was really just too small for this van. It only sort of just covered the front end. So We're like double the length that we used to be. Yeah, the old one was three meters. The new one is six meters. So it's double. 
And I'm um, double the width. It's also double the weight. <laughs> yeah, I know. Everything adds up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else did you get? You bought a few spares. Yeah, I don't know much about these. I just bought what you asked me to. Yeah, they're just. We bought some spare um, push fittings. Are these? I think you got the genuine John Guest ones, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, they are. Yeah, you did. What they're else? They're only did cheap too. They're only like two dollars each. Oh yeah, and these red things. They're little locking rings to actually lock these in position. I'm supposed to stop them from coming loose or whatever. Some spare oh, water line. Pipe. Yep. Uh, wheel bearings for the. For the van? For the van. Yep. I carry spare wheel bearings for the car as well. Actually, I'll show you that. So, because it, like I said before, I went to AGD Auto up in Wangara to get a bit of a pre-trip inspection done. A few of the things I got changed, like um, uh, drive belts, water pump, viscous hub, uh, and a couple of pulleys. I've kept all the old ones as spares. So, I'll, I, I always do that. I try to carry as much as you can, sort of one spare everything that's th that I can repair myself. There's no point carrying stuff that I can't, I don't have the expertise to be able to fit myself. But yeah, there's only so much crap you can carry. Yeah. yeah. What else? What about these? Yeah, this is one thing I want to fit before we go as well, Tiff. So this is just a new um, USB-C plug. Uh, it's from Allspark Off-Road Living. And it's a 60 watt one. And the reason, I think it's a quick charge for, the reason that I bought that one was this will be able to keep up with my laptop battery. So a lot of USB-C plugs, like I've got a couple of other ones in the car, they, they won't actually charge the laptop, they just don't have enough current. So this one, um, I'm gonna wire somewhere around the seat so while I'm editing at night, I don't have to run the inverter to charge the laptop because the inverter has a fan that cycles on and off and it makes a bit of noise, uses more power. It's much more efficient to charge straight off USB-C if I can. So that's today's job. I've got quite a bit to do. Um, just quickly, the inverter will be too busy running my electric blanket, which I haven't spoken about. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe we're doing this. Go on. Uh, well, now that our itinerary's changed, we might not need it. But I did buy, because I was given permission, <laughs> an electric blanket. Um, we have one at home and it's like the best thing it. since yeah. sliced bread. So. Um, Queen size electric blanket. It's got dual controllers, so you can have my side on, your side off. Which is a necessity because I be I barely ever have the thing on, and when I do, it's on the lower setting. <laughs> and I have it on ten. Tiff's is cranking. Sometimes my leg creeps over there during the night, mm. and it's like getting burnt. Yeah, but I think because we need the inverter to run it, it's not a twelve volt one. It's just your normal household one. I figure that I will at least preheat the bed when the inverter's on, and then yeah. when we go to sleep, I'll turn the inverter off. Plus, we've got multiple options if we're yeah. we're fair weather campers, so we're that's why we're heading. Our itinerary's changed. I'll tell you in a sec. We're heading north now into the better weather, so we shouldn't have too many cold. Yeah. Through the centre will be cold. Yes. But we've got heaps of options. If if we are on power, like in a caravan park, then we'll we'll run the aircon. It's a reverse cycle, so that can run as a heater. Yeah, but I've also got um, because I have heard that they don't run very well in really cold weather. Oh, okay. Uh, so I bought. Oh mate, so we've got four options to heat now. <laughs> it's just a Kmart little fan heater, they're so good. It's not super efficient to run that off the inverter, so it's unlikely that we'll run that off-grid. Yeah, I only bought it for when we're plugged in. Yeah. Yeah. But what we will do if we're off-grid and it's cold is run the diesel heater. Yes, we've got that too. <laughs> so we've got a fan heater, an aircon, a diesel heater, and an electric blanket. Yeah. And did you see, I got a comment yesterday from someone from Canada, yeah. and he goes, when you say you're cold, how cold is it? And I felt stupid saying, we think it's pretty cold if it's under 20 degrees. Because yes. there's people living in like, you know, minus 10. I bought a toaster too. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. We were using the... The grill. The grill, but Brody's always got his hands in it, so it's easier to have toast cooking up on the bench. Yeah, he's walking now and he's just at that height where he can get to these things. Righto, what else? Oh, tell them about the itinerary. Yes, so... Oh, last time we spoke about this was probably, what, three or four months ago. Mm. Uh, the initial plan was to still go through the centre, so Great Central Road to Uluru, Kings Canyon, West Max, all of that sort of thing. Then we were going to make our way down through the Flinders, back home along the Nullarbor. We've scrapped that. It's just too cold in the Flinders. South Australia, it's too freezing. In so, July, August. Yeah. June, July, August. Yeah, and not freezing, but it's just cold. So we're going, same thing, to Uluru, Great Central, but now we're going to head up straight through to the top to Darwin, um, along the way, Daly Waters, Mataranka, yeah. Catherine, Litchfield, all of those things. Kakadu, yeah. all the um, good stuff. Yeah, so 
uh, yeah, two months traveling. I'm, are we going to mention that? I'm actually yeah, going to, I'm actually, I'm interested to hear if people got suggestions and stuff to do. Yeah, I'm actually going to, when we get to Darwin, we're going to spend a few weeks up in Darwin as a family and then I'm going to fly home with the two kids. Which would um, be horrible. Yeah, I know, but there's a few reasons why we need to do that. I'm heading back to work. Chloe's got school, so yeah, we need to come home. You've still got an extra two weeks off work, so yeah. you're going to make your way back home with yeah, the van. Yeah, the, the thing is, if we travel all together as a family, with the kids, we're limited to two or three hundred yeah. k's a day. Yeah, we don't. That's awesome doing that on the way up because there's heaps of stuff to see. But that would mean we'd be shortening. We should. Have, we'd need to turn around and come home two weeks earlier to be able to do the same two or three hundred k's a day on the way home. So effectively, we can have. It gives us almost like an extra two weeks of seeing different stuff if if Tiff and yeah. the kids fly home. And we can slow down a little bit. And then my. My extra two weeks up north, I'll probably do a week, maybe 10 days poking around either the top of the territory um, or the Kimberley, and then I can gun home when I'm ready with the van in tow. Yep, so that's the plan. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. I've never, we've never, have you done the territory? Yeah, as, but not for a long time. Oh yeah, you've done all the road. You haven't done Darwin, have you? Since you're a kid. Only as a kid. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I've not done it ever, so I'm excited. I think, is that the only state you haven't been to? I think it is. Yep. Yeah, that's, this is the only state you've not been to. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Cool. Oh, oh, territory. Only territory. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right, that was a lot. It's a bit of a disjointed episode. Oh, we... you haven't talked about fishing shows. Oh, yeah. Oh, let's... And the web store. Just quickly, the web store. Oh, yes. Um, it's already so... offline by the time this comes out. Yeah, it is. It's we've, we've shut the web store. Because it's only Cam and I that manage the web shop, we just can't do it on the road. We can't carry stock. So we've shut it down while we're traveling. You can still place orders, but they won't be sent until... I'll put it on the screen. Yeah, they won't be sent until we're back. So... Um, yeah, feel free to order things still. They just won't be processed, so they'll, you'll just be waiting a little while. So yeah, but we uh, by the time we get home, we're gonna we've got extra stock coming in and stuff. So anything you do order now, by the time we get home, we'll have stock and everything will go out in that first week we're back. It'll be a big week for yes, you. Yes, and we're also gonna run fishing shirt pre-orders while we're away. So yeah, you wanna I'm, model your new shirt. Yeah, I'm wrapped with this. Um, I'm wearing a two XL. These are slightly bigger than. Um, other brand fishing shirts and so make sure you look at our sizing chart online because I pre-order all this stuff. I don't carry stock, so I can't do returns. Um, We're calling these adventure shirts. Yeah, they're not so much a fishing shirt. They're, I'm going to wear these going for um, hikes and walks and stuff like that because they breathe really easy. They've got some sort of SPF something. They're, you know, long sleeve, keep the sun off you, which I need. Yeah, I reckon they come out good. We'll zoom in on the back. And then the, um, what do you call that again? Uh, like topography? topography lines, and it's sort of like a, it's a bit hard to see in the lighting, but it's a green that sort of fades to a dark olive colour. Did you just zoom in on my crotch? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Anyway, yeah. So if you like them, pre order, same price as the other ones. Kids' sizes, women's sizes, from size one or size. No, size zero. Okay, from size zero to or size. I think we're 6XL is the largest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, you know what? I'm going to open them up. They'll be open now. Yeah. So, yep, you can order it um, now. Uh, it's roughly a back. six week turnaround. Yeah, around. by the time we're back, I, I imagine that we'll have them and then, yeah, we'll send them. Yeah. Good eye. Oh, and what we'll do, Tiff, is we'll also offer the other ones again as well. So, we'll have three designs for sale. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. One of them is more like a fishing shirt, the blue one, and then these other two are sort of like adventure you shirts. You put them all up on the screen here. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's it. All right, so we've got a lot of packing to do. We do. Um, just quickly as well, while I remember, if you do want to follow along as we travel, um, of course, we've got the weekly YouTube episodes, but uh, we are active on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. Um, and that's sort of more real time. So stories and posts and whatnot. So you can follow along as we travel for the next few months. Yeah. Oh, also, as soon as, pretty much as soon as we get back, um, we're going to roll straight into a Patreon camp. Yes. So if you've ever thought about Patreon, um, you get early content, extra posts, extra content. There's different tiers for different budgets. Yeah, you get free merch, discount on the web store. Yep, yeah. uh, and uh, camping trips with us as well. Yeah. We've done a few of them now, they've been really good fun. And uh, when we get back from this trip, we'll be doing another Patreon camp. So if you want to be a part of that, check that out. No pressure if you don't want to, it's all good. No, of course not, you've still got YouTube episodes. Always will. Everything else, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Thank you guys for the support. We're really looking forward to this trip. Yes. And um, let's go pack this van. Let's do it. Okay. This is just Chloe's. <laughs> no, it's just mine. <laughs> it mixed up.
it now? 